Hello, my name is Mary Yell. Welcome back to another one of my movie reviews. Before we get into the review of The Black Phone, I just wanted to share an update. These next two weeks, I am going to be taking a break. I advise you, if you ever make your own YouTube channel, take a break. Without further ado, let's start our talk about The Black Phone. I had so much fun seeing this film in theaters. The Black Phone is a 2022 film based on the short story written by Joe Hill. A 13-year-old boy is abducted by a child killer. Locked in a soundproof basement, Vinny receives calls on a disconnected phone. The killer's previous victims give him advice. The Black Phone was a suspenseful, creative, and it had superb sound design. At times, certain story elements could have been explained a little better. There was too much ambiguity. No matter the situation, use your resources and you will survive. Mason Holmes did an incredible job with his character. He did not have an easy role. Holmes cut my heart during an emotional scene. Using his wit, Vinny never gives in to his kidnapper's threatening behavior. Ethan Hawke sent shivers up my spine. Inhibiting a creepy personality, Hawke advanced as little as possible, keeping his body stiff. Even his voice was chilling, dropping in ranges to evoke terror. I know it is a good idea to keep the character's nature subtle, but I feel like we needed more backstory. Gwen is one fierce kid who speaks her mind. Madeline McCraw supplies the needed comic relief from the tension. The only aspect of Gwen's character that fell flat was her supernatural abilities. I adored the sibling relationship between Finney and Gwen. They set a good example. It made the story more personal. Jeremy Davies, E. Roger Mitchell, Troy Rudisil, and Miguel Cazares Mora also star as various characters. The kid ensemble was terrific. I was on the fence about the family dynamic. Jeremy Davies did not garner the best direction for his character. He was overdramatic in his performance. Terrence is loud and brash to his children, but I didn't buy his sincerity at the end. There is also a memorable appearance by James Ransone, who played adult Eddie Kasbrack in It Chapter 2. Ransone is a great comedic actor. However, once we find out about his relationship with a certain character, his role deserved to be expanded. The concept for The Black Phone reminded me of Coraline. The film appointed a creative approach for Finney to talk to the previous victims. I kid you not, I felt shivers race up my spine at the first revelation. The film keeps you engaged throughout. Scott Derrickson approached this film with an open mind and creative techniques. Jump scares were effective. Sound design mastered alarming vocal effects. The art team developed startling masks. The tension was so good that you could feel it haunting through the air. I saw this film with a small audience, but I could sense how on edge everyone was. I have not read the story by Joe Hill. I will now. But the film lacked important details like the grabber's history and Gwen's powers. As much as I like the ambiguity, I was left with unanswered questions. It is so worth it to experience the black phone in theaters. It is scary. The theme of kidnapping may be triggering for some viewers. I recommend that you see the black phone in theaters or once it is streaming. Thanks for catching my review of the black phone. For those who read the book, how do you compare the movie? I am going to miss you these next two weeks. When I return, I'll be reviewing three movies for Robin Williams Memorial Week. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel or to my Patreon. My name is Marielle, and this has been another one.
of my movie reviews.